welcome friends welcome to the knowledge club online now i am going to discuss about the eukaryotic initiation factor for translation eukaryotic initiation factors eifs are proteins involved in the initiation phase of eukaryotic translation competent translation requires at least 9 eukaryotic initiation factors described they function in forming a complex with the 40s ribosomal subunit and make tRNA called the 43s pre-initiation complex means PIC pick which then recognizes the five prime cap structure of messenger RNA and recruiting the 43s pick to mRNA promoting ribosomal scanning of mrna and regulating recognition of the aug initiation colon to form the 48s complex which then joining to the 60s ribosomal subunit to create the 80s ribosome there exist many more eukaryotic initiation factors than prokaryotic initiation factors due to the greater biological complexity of eukaryotic cells The protein RL1 is known to have an essential probably catalytic role in the formation of initiation complexes as well. First, the eukaryotic initiation factors are EIF1 and EIF3. EIF1, EIF1A and EIF3 all bind to the ribosome subunit mRNA complex they have been implicated in preventing the large ribosomal subunit from binding the small subunit before it is ready to commence elongation in mammals eif3 is the largest scaffolding initiation factor made up of 13 subunits it is roughly 750 k dalton and it controls the assembly of 40s ribosomal subunit on mrna that have a 5 prime cap or an ires internal ribosomal entry site eif3 uses the eif4f complex or ires from viruses to position the mrna strand near the exit exit site of the 40s ribosome subunit thus promoting the assembly of the pre-initiation complex in many cancers over expressed under serum deprived conditions uh, in active state eif3 is bound to s6k1 on stimulation by either mitogens growth factors or drugs mtor or receptor complex gets activated and in turn binds and phosphorylates phosphor uh, phosphorylates s6k1 on t389 linker region causing a conformational change that causes the kinase s6k1 to dissociate from eif3 the t389 phosphorylated s6k1 is then further phosphorylated by PDK1 on T229 this second phosphorylation fully activates the S6K1 kinase which can then phosphorylate EIF4B S6 and other protein targets which creates the cancer mammalian 17K dalton eukaryotic initiation factor EIF1A formally designated EIF4C is essential for transfer of the initiate initiator met tRNA F to 40s ribosomal subunit in the absence of mRNA to form the 40s pre-initiation complex 40s met tRNA F EIF2 GTP furthermore EIF1A acts catalytically in this reaction to mediate highly efficient transfer of the met tRNA F EIF2 GTP ternary complex to 40s ribosomal subunits 
the 40s complex formed is free of EIF1A which indicates that its role in 40s pre initiation complex formation is not to stabilize the binding of met tRNA F to 40s ribosomes additionally the EIF1A mediated 40s initiation complex formed in the presence of AUG codon efficiently joins 60 60s ribosomal subunits in an EIF5 dependent reaction to form a functional 80s initiation complex though found in some reports EIF1A probably plays no role either in the subunit joining reaction or in the generation of ribosomal subunits from 80s ribosomes the major function of EIF1A is to mediate the transfer of of met tRNA F to 40s ribosomal subunit to form the 40s pre initiation complex then i come to the EIF2 EIF2 is a GTP binding protein responsible for bridging the initiated tRNA to the P site of the pre initiation complex it has specificity for the methionine charged initiated tRNA which is distinct from other methionine charged tRNA specific for elongation of the polypeptide chain once it has placed the initiator tRNA on the AUG start codon in the P site it hydrolyzes GTP into GDP and dissociates this hydrolysis also signals for the dissociation of EIF3 EIF1 and EIF1A and allows the large subunit to bind this signals the beginning of elongation EIF2 has three subunits EIF2 alpha beta and gamma the former is of particular importance for cells that may need to turn off protein synthesis globally when phosphorylated it uh, sequesters EIF2B not to be confused with beta a GEF without this GEF GTP cannot be exchanged for GTP and translation is repressed EIF2 alpha induced translation repression occurs in reticulocytes when starved for iron in addition protein kinase r pkr phosphorylates eif2 alpha when this rrna is detected in many multicellular organisms leading to cell death now i am going to the eif 5a and eif 5b eif 5a is a gtps activating protein which helps the large ribosomal subunit associate with the small subunit it is required for the gtp hydrolysis by eif2 and contains the unusual amino acid hypoxin eif 5p is a gtps and is involved in assembly of the full ribosome which requires gtp hydrolysis next is eif6 eif6 performs the same initiation of ribosome assembly 3 but binds with the large subunit the canonical pathway of eukaryotic transition initiation is divided into eight stages which is described in this picture these stages follow the recycling of post termination complexes post tcs 1 to yield separated 40s and 60s ribosomal subunits and result in the formation of an 80s ribosomal initiation complex in which met tRNA met i is best paired best paired with the initiation codon in the ribosomal p site and which is competent to start the translation elongation stage these stages are eukaryotic initiation factor 
EIF2 GTP met tRNA met I ternary complex formation. 2. Formation of a 43S pre initiation complex comprising a 40S subunit EIF1, EIF1A, EIF3, EIF2 GTP met tRNA met I and probably EIF5. Number 3. mRNA activation during which the mRNA cap proximal region is unwound in an ATP depending manner by EIF4F which EIF4B. Next is the 4. Number 4 is attachment of the 43S complex to this mRNA region. Number 5, scanning of the 5' UTR in a 5' to 3' direction by 43S complexes. Number 6, recognition of the initiation codon and 48S initiation complex formation which switches the scanning complex to a closed conformation and leads to the displacement of EIF1 to allow EIF5 mediated hydrolysis of EIF2 bound GTP and PI release. Number 7. Joining of 60S subunits to 48S complexes and concomitant displacement of EIF2 GDP and other factors EIF1, EIF3, EIF4B, EIF4F and EIF5 mediated by EIF5B. Number 8. GTP hydrolysis by EIF5B, EIF1A and GDP bound EIF5B from assembled elongation competent 80S ribosomes. Number 9. Translation is a cyclical process in which termination follows elongation and leads to recycling. 1. Which generates Separated ribosomal subunits, the model omits potential closed loop interactions involving poly A binding proteins PABP, eukaryotic release factors 3, ERF3, and EIF4F during recycle, recycling. Whether ERF3 is still present on ribosomes at the recycling stage is unknown. Maybe this lecture will be helpful to you. Thank you.